welcome to the October 1st meeting of the Hyde Park Planning Board. Please take note of all the exits around the room and now join me as we reaffirm our loyalty to the American flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. The first item on the agenda is continued public hearing for River Ridge. Applicants are seeking a site plan amendment uh, for facade upgrades. These are the townhomes located just to the north of here on the west side of Route 9. Make it a motion to reopen the public hearing. So, so moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. We'll start off with the consultants. Ms. Polidoro, any updates for us? Well, <laughs> there's so many. Consultants, right? <laughs> So um, just a quick overview of the conditions of approval. Um, last time the applicant was here, did, did we talk about the trail easement? I mentioned it. Okay. So when, we, when the board approved the recreation center last September, it made a condition of the certificate of occupancy that the applicant submit a plan which shows the trail easement. Because the rec center hasn't progressed that far, we still haven't received that plan showing the easement. Um, so we had proposed to require it as a condition tonight, but the applicant objected saying, you know, I'd really like more time to be able to get that plan together. In addition, we're not certain that the easement was actually recorded and filed. We know it was executed, but we, I asked direct director Kathleen Davis a couple of days ago with an urgent on the email title, but I haven't heard back. So requiring it as a condition right now, if it's never been filed, uh, doesn't seem really prudent. So we need to make sure that it's actually been recorded in the county clerk's office. Right. So this would this would put that off until the rec center structure is completed. Correct. Um, Anything else? The well, the other issue that we've been dealing with is parking because the plan that was prepared for this purpose, which shows the new footprints, does seem to show parking spaces on the individual townhome lots. Now, when you go back and you pull the subdivision plat that was approved 10 or 11 years ago, it, you know, it shows small rectangles. And so the question is, how do these parking spaces overlay on that subdivision plat? Um, Dan Wheeler said that he made a mistake in the layers. And so we added a condition saying that if there is parking on the individual lots, that we need easements. So this will give them the opportunity to sort that out. And without coming back to the board. And just for the edification of the audience, this is actually designed to help prevent problems for the future. If there's a case, if, if as is shown right now on the plans that were submitted, if communal parking or guest parking is shown on, on a, an individual's lot, if that individual said, I don't want anybody parking there, he has the right to deny parking after that except for his own personal guests. So in order to avoid any kind of anything <coughs> like that happening with maybe neighbors uh, fighting, we want to make sure that there are easements granted so that the HOA would control and also uh, the uh, removal of snow in the parking areas that are, that are common for guests. This should be handled by the HOA, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So it's a condition. If they can prove that there's no reason because it was already, these were subdivided, these lots for the common parking areas were already subdivided, then the condition is moot. And if, uh, if somehow when this was approval was done 11 years ago, if that wasn't caught, then we'll be catching up on a problem making it go away now. Any other comments? The only other comment is that we received an email from Liz Axelson and Pete Sotero, and they advised the board that the change in footprints will not impact the approved stormwater management plan. Great. Thank you. Um, let me start to my right. Mr. Mercigliani, any additional comments? Uh, no, I don't. Ms. Dexter? No. Mr. Groninger? No comment. Mr. Murphy? You left me a little bit at the starting gate on the um, easement thing. We can make that a condition? Yes. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Cigna? No comment. Would anyone from the public like to comment about this application? There being none, we get a motion to close the public hearing. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Who has this file? I have it. Resolution granting site plan amendment approval T. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yes, that was good. Got it. 
Resolution granting site plan amendment extension approval of River Ridge, formerly known as Maple Ridge, October 1st, 2014, Resolution 57-02K. Whereas, 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 whereas. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Planning Board hereby affirms its prior CICRA determination of non-significance, last reaffirmed on September 4th, 2013, finding that the minor modifications to the facades and footprints would not result in any significant adverse environmental impacts. Be it further resolved that the Planning Board grants amended site plan approval for the new elevations as shown on an elevation prepared by Barton Partners dated August 19th, 2014, sheets one and two, and the modified building footprints as shown on the plan entitled River Ridge at Hyde Park, prepared by D.F. Wheeler Engineers PC, dated March 20th, 2013, last <coughs> revised August 19th, 2014, S-1, and authorizes the chair to sign the site plan after compliance with the following conditions. One, payment of all fees in escrow. Two, revision of the site plan to contain a planning board signature block. Three, revision of the site of the sheet number to be S1.1. Four, revision of the site plan to contain the following note. This revised sheet S-1.1 modifies the proposed building footprints and depicts the location of the trail easement. All other details on the site plan said entitled River Ridge Exterior Lighting Design prepared by D.F. Wheeler Engineers PC, Revision 5, last revised April 18th, 2011, remain valid and part of the approved site plan. Five, verification that the required performance guarantee for the road is in full force and effect. Six, approval by the Planning Board Attorney of parking easements granted to the HOA for any guest parking spaces which are located on individual townhome lots. Be it further resolved that this amended site plan approval extends the time to complete construction of the site plan entitled River Ridge at High Park, prepared by D.F. Wheeler Engineers PC Revision 5, last revised April 18th, 2011, excluding the separate recreation center site plan for an additional two years from the date that the amended sheet S1.1 is signed. Second. I have to make a quick correction. Condition four, the uh, sentence following the colon, it should read this revised sheet S-1.1 modifies the proposed building footprints, period, as it will not be depicting the location of the trail easement at this point. Okay, so I will delete and depicts the location of the trail easement. Yes. Thank you. Now, is there a second? Where did it? Where did we put the condition of the trail easement in there? No. So there, there was a condition earlier today about a trail easement, <laughs> and uh, I had a last-minute phone call with the applicants or from the applicant's attorney before the meeting, and so that condition was deleted, but number four wasn't updated. Only because we already we conditioned it when we did the when we did the recreation center. center. That's on a separate parcel. All right. So when We're we it, we'll get it, we'll get it no matter what. Right. Like I All said. Right. Thank you. Okay. Second is amended. Thank you. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 <coughs> Thank you. The motion carries. <coughs> the next item on the agenda is Lands of Sire. <coughs> Applicants are seeking a site plan extension for to build a medical and improved medical building at 4185 Albany Post Road. Making a motion to reopen the public hearing. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any comments from consultant? No. Nope. Any comments from the board? No. Nope. We have a letter from Mr. We, d we discussed this in the last public hearing. If you'll recall, both of these public hearings had to be held open because the Poughkeepsie Journal failed to advertise them properly. Um, but basically, Mr. Mr. Baxter is still looking for an anchor tenant on the bottom floor. Uh, there's someone interested. Uh, that was, he forwarded an email to me, but it's not a medical plaza or a medical tenant. So just in advance, he we're going. I think we should continue this because he's c continuing to look for medical uh, tenant. But if the tenant that's proposing to come there returns, then he'll have to come back for a site plan amendment because it would be for an entirely different building, almost a different use. Um, would anyone from the public like to comment about this application? There being none, make the motion to close the public hearing. So moved. Second. Who has this file? I All do. in favor? Aye. Sorry. Aye. Thank you. Who has this file? I do. Resolution number 58-08E. Whereas, 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 now therefore be resolved that the planning board hereby grants a one-year extension pursuant to section 108 
dash nine point six A of the code of the time in which the applicant must commence construction to and including September seventeenth and the time in which to complete construction to and including September seventeenth, two thousand sixteen. There will be no written verbal notification from the planning board office, the applicant at such time as the extension expires. Any request for an extension of the deadline set forth herein must be submitted to the planning board at least 30 days in advance of said dates. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries unanimously. The next item on the agenda is a new public hearing for Haviland Shopping Plaza. The applicant is seeking a site plan amendment to do some, again, some facade upgrades. And Mr. Lease, come on up. Let me first get a motion to open the public hearing. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And just as a housekeeping detail real quickly, um, Ms. Knapp, for later on when we do the resolutions for the signage at uh, Gardner Van Valkenburg's property, you printed out the park beverage wall signs twice, so we need the W.O. Gills resolution. It's okay. <laughs> We're going to need that. We have it's there somewhere. There's three Darby resolutions here, yeah. and the W.O. Gills one is for the park beverage wall signs, which already, that's on the right folder, that sign, so we just need W.O. Gills to be printed out, okay? Sorry about that, Mr. Lease. Would you like to take over from me for a moment? Show me the resolution again. I'm sorry, we're having another housekeeping moment. Where's the resolution for? Ms. Polidoro. Yes. Uh, in the extension for Lands of Sire, mm -hmm. as when I'm now looking at the, this was not sent to me earlier. When I'm looking here, it appears we did not reaffirm our prior secret findings. Oh, uh, you don't have to. Good. Oh because extension requests are type two actions. Thank you. Yeah. Now, you Mr. Lee, one more time. Would you like to make any kind of presentation? Sure, sure. I, I got two copies of everyone else. Sure. Yes. Do we have the walk around microphone? No. building permit and what we've done is we created spots for all the signage so I can make the signage uniform now so I've given dimensions and locations of all the signs for all 11 stores um, the rest of the plan is the same the other detail that we changed can you speak a little more closely into the microphone oh, i'm sorry thank the you. other detail that we changed is on the flat roof area on, uh, in relation to the comment that you made last time so we added a railing it says metal railing i don't believe it's going to be made out of uh, metal it'll probably be uh, maybe some man-made material maybe a hard plastic but it's going to be a white almost a fence-like material and that'll match all the white trim that's going on above the hardy board there. So that, that'll give you a break. That'll give us a break on the two flat roof areas. Uh, thank you. Um, I have to, my first question would be, I don't believe Ms. Moss has had a chance to review all the sign locations. Do we know that this comports with our sign code? In other words, you, you have a, a total uh, a ma a maximum allowed for the site. Uh, and I want to make sure that. And did you bring extra copies for everyone? No, I just brought two uh, sets of drawings, which I can leave if you need. And the second page has uh, some of the cuts and the uh, the dormers and the dimensions and so forth. I have to check the sign code, but I believe that there's a maximum for uh, signs in a shopping center of 100 square feet for all signage. Mm -hmm. 
I, I, I should add the uh, railing looks nice. Yeah. And I like the fact that you, Ms. Moss will be particularly happy that you uh, gave her location for future signage. Yes. Each each sign can have no more than two wall signs, and it's based on the linear square footage of their leased area. But in no case shall an individual business have more than 100 square feet of signage. So there's no total for the overall shopping center. Good. Right. Uh, the freestanding sign does have a total. I don't right, but this and so this is showing only signs per tenant, a total of two wall signs, or in some cases one, and none of them it looks like is going to exceed the amount per. Okay, so that but, looks uh, like but Ted would need to measure to make sure that they each comport with the linear. the least area. Right. Um, so the the allowed signage is based on what your lineal square footage is in the front. So if a particular business only has, say, 20 square feet, then all it can have is a 20 square foot sign. Those can be two wall signs that are each 10, or it can be 120. Um, I see what you did. You just put a uh, sign in the area over each window, which pretty much makes sense, and you made them uniform, which is also nice. We just have to check the calculations to make sure that uh, what we're proving <coughs> is actually allowed by code. That makes sure. any sense to you? Sure, absolutely. Okay. Um, did you make any other changes you want to know or you want us to mention to us? No, I think that's it. Thank you. Can, can you describe the railing more? Is it decorative? Uh, or is no. it to hang the signs from? Oh, no, no, no. It's just... Um, to disguise the flat roof. It, it was just something it's that kind of ties the buildings together, okay. and it was kind of an inexpensive, sturdy way, and it'll match the white trim, so I think it'll be nice. Yeah. Um, let me then comments from uh, Ms. Polidoro. Any further? No. Uh, Mr. Stigna, any comments? Uh, Still concerned about the drainage, and I think we received a letter. Uh, you see a copy of this letter at all? No. Um, why don't you take my copy and just kind of breeze through it, and it'll help you understand what our concerns are. Yeah. The adjacent site owner, Ms. Yeah. Pizzarelli of Rita's Isis, has submitted comments that we should, should we read those into the record? I think we you don't need to read the entire letter. So I thought we can sort of stipulate. But you can just say the letter dated October 1st. Right. Um, Ms. Pizzarelli I submitted a letter dated October 1st along with various pictures, and they have to do with drainage issues that are toward the rear of the property. Um, it's unclear from the pictures, at least to me, where exactly she's taking the pictures on. Uh, I can't tell if all the drainage is on, all the water problems are on your site or if it's a combination of sites, uh, there's just not enough clarity on it from what I could tell from the photos. And when I compared to the survey just now, it's still unclear to me. Um, I believe what we would need to do is have Mr. Sotero look at this, our engineer, to see. Mr. Lees, can you, well, you're still looking at it. Yep, no, absolutely, no, I, I know exactly what she's talking about. No, so what we did was, can I, you, should I explain? Yes, please. Yeah. So um, there was, and I never really noticed it because it's behind the building, and um, the really only people that use behind the building is for deliveries and pay less oil. So there was a defunct catch basin with a broken up uh, grate cover, grate on it. Never really noticed it, and it was kind of all angled and beat up and everything. So what we did is I was going to rebuild it, but it wasn't really doing anything anyway. So what I did is I pulled it out and we took that whole air and we filled it with stone and then we graded it. I had an excavator come in and did that and cleaned that whole back area up and it, it works as like a natural drain, but it doesn't really, the water doesn't really accumulate there. The water is the, really accumulates in the front. But no, there's no drain there. There's nothing there anymore. The grate's not covered. I pulled it all out. It was all garbage. We, Cleaned it all up, took it out last summer. Can you tell me when, when you did this approximately? Her pictures are from June. So June of this year? Uh -huh. I think I did it summer of last year. Her pictures are of the gravel, um, and that's the way it looks today. So what I did was there's about four feet of gravel there. We, when we pulled the catch basin out, we filled it all up with gravel. And so there's about four feet of gravel there, graded off. Um, I was gonna I was gonna blacktop over that, but I was told that that catch basin was put in because the house alongside the driveway, the, the neighbor's house, their basement used to get flooded. So uh -huh. my excavator says, John, you better not fill that up because I think it was put in there for a reason a long time ago. 
So we took it out, we, we made a natural um, gravel area. And never had any questions from the neighbor or anything, so it must work fine. Well, this is a question from your commercial neighbor, that's all uh, next door. And it, it appears as though what she's saying is, is that the water runs under her property when it fills up. Don't know, don't know. Okay, any additional comments, Mr. Cigna? No, that's, that's. Mr. Main. Murphy? Just that I'm very concerned about the drainage and I agree we need to send Peter over there and uh, have him meet with the uh, writer, the author of the letter and uh, see if we can't figure out where the water's coming from, where it's supposed to go to and uh, get everybody happy. Uh, I apologize, Ms., uh, Mr. Cetera, our engineering consultant, thought there wasn't anything for him tonight and so yesterday he asked if he could be excused from attending both he and uh, Ms. Axelson and I said yes. But this just came to us this afternoon uh, for new information so he hasn't had a chance to even review it himself either I don't think because I think he took the day off. Uh, Mr. Groninger. Uh, I took <coughs> concerned about the drainage because if you look at the bottom of that packet you were given she has them dated September 2014. But it still shows the manhole there. No, there's no man the manhole in this one. I, I, I agree with you. I'm just <coughs> say, I'm pointing out the discrepancy there. But there's no di real date. It just says September 2014. There's not a date in front of it. So I don't really know what to make of this. And yeah, new news. We have to have a meeting. <laughs> oh, we have I'm to sorry, understand that, that. That manhole is, I don't know what that is. That's not what I was talking about. I don't know if that, that's my property, though. Uh, well, that's what I'm also not no, sure of. Right. Let, let's go back to, to the picture. Here. I, see this picture? I didn't even notice that manhole. I don't know. I, that might be a sewer drain or something, but that's not what I was talking about. The catch basin was right there in the middle. Huh. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that might be a sewer drain or something. I don't know, even know where my property ends there because I don't know who owns that driveway coming out. But the catch basin that I took out was right in the middle of that gravel. And that was the catch basin created supposedly because the neighbor got flooded you know, 20 years ago or so. Yeah, I have to then agree with my two board members to the left. This is, we do need to understand it. But I also want to compliment you because I was concerned about the flat roofs. I like the uh, white fencing up there. Uh, <coughs> it'll be a dramatic, nice improvement to the area. Yeah, thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Mr. Lease, everyone apparently uses the rear drive for deliveries, as you said, uh, pay less deliveries for, I, I mean, I presume that when Awesome Foods was open, even though that's not on your parcel, they also could have had deliveries back there? Is that a commonly used driveway, in other words? Well, I guess it's a cut through. Yeah, well, I know Payless does, and I know the Chinese restaurants gets their deliveries in the back. They can come from the front, or they can come from the other side. Mm -hmm. I also think that people go through that driveway maybe to get around the light there. Yeah, well, I don't like get around the light, but I mean, we're coming down Haven Road and come across. Oh. Yeah, I get, yeah. Herb, I get Herb fired up here. Well, um, I, I don't like people really to go behind that building there because my Yeah, well, we go behind Reeders and right up through and then out the front of the shopping center. Yeah. So do you know who owns that driveway? Is that, is that easement granted to you or? Because like you just said, it doesn't look at the parcel that, that is yours, but on the survey it just says ROW. Where it hits onto Havilland, it doesn't. Yeah, no, I have a no. I don't own it. Yeah, and that manhole you're looking at, I don't. I don't think I. Well, I can't tell where I am right here, but I have. I don't own that driveway out to Havilland Road. It says I have a 12 foot right away on my site plan. Do we assume that that, that is Miss Pizzarelli's property? Yeah. Yeah. I would he has the easement so. over it. Yeah, I would think so. Yes. But it seems to show. But I don't know if there's a recorded document. Mm -hmm. It's just that it's well, one of the other things that gets intriguing about this, if you again looking at one of the other photographs, and I didn't see this till 6.30 tonight, so I apologize, oh. but I would have driven over there. There's also appears to be a gated fence there. No, you know what that is? No, you mean, I'm sorry, when you say gated fence, you mean the little split the, rail fence? No, uh, the gates? No, it actually has a gate on it in one of the photographs. That's the dumpster? That's right. That's the oh, right. is that the edge of the dumpster? Yes. That's or is that actually block people from getting... You said you have a front access to it. So I mean, it really doesn't make any difference. It's just a question where is that, does that block off? Like, does it block an emergency vehicle from getting in there? I'm um, back to fire or EMS. No, no, no. That, are you talking about that, that right there? Yes. I think, that, I think that's probably the front of her dumpster enclosure. Yeah, it is. Okay. Looking at it. Again, I looked at the drawing and I can't tell. Yeah, and that area that she's showing off flooded is mostly her area, mostly her property. 
That's what I was going to say. It looks to me as though like her water is going on my property. If he has the easement over, I don't know where the water is being created, but it appears as though a majority of it is actually on the Rita Zeiss's parcel. Yeah. Probably comes off the Haviland Road, you know, because it, it, it kind of slopes down from there, you know. Yeah. This is why we'll have the We're engineers take We just got to figure out how to get rid of it, how to make everybody happy. Yeah. Michael, I'm going to ask also, obviously, when the town engineer to make sure that we do Absolutely. not have some sort of blockage for access to the rear from an EMS perspective. I actually emailed him uh, before I came to tonight to have him take a look at it as soon as possible. Ms. Dexter, any comments? Uh, I also really like the um, addition of it's a, it's a very simple solution to put the, the metal fencing up there. And I guess my question is with the signage, so you didn't you didn't have something coming down off the roof. This is actually on the wall above right. the above the windows. Right. Okay. Which is code compliant. Yep. Yep. I, I mean, I like the look of it. I think that's going to be great, and it'll be fairly easy for your tenants to come in and. Yeah. This way, whenever sign. you have tenants, new tenants, Boom. they all they have to do is come in and just show us the sign as long as it fits within those spaces. That's it. Right. That, that's what you said it's last pretty, time. Yeah. It's, it's yeah. easier that way. Thank you. Yeah. Good solution. Yep. Mr. Mercigliano. Uh, no comment. I uh, like the railings over the flat roofs. <laughs> Thank you. And proof. <laughs> I think it'll be nice. Is there anyone from the public who'd like to speak about this application? Okay, there being none. Oh, um, go. You do. oh Ms. Sweet, please come and speak. Take the microphone. Mm -hmm. Yes, please. Barbara Sweet, 6 Covey Road, Hyde Park. Uh, if this is going to be painted siding or whatever um, new hardy board pardon hardy board siding okay uh keep it a subdued color rather than a bright white color if possible the color that you're seeing on there will be the color that's going to be painted the color is shown okay oh okay. example's good yep that looks mm -hmm. uh more subdued than bright white okay is Thank that, you. Is that? Yeah. No, that's yeah. a good Thank comment. Thank you. Yeah. you. Okay. Mr. Lee's brought samples because we. we stone also. Thank you. Uh, the um, I'm told that uh, the three schools and the post office were done with, of course, uh, stone. The brick makers along the Hudson, there are 140 different brickyards. They were re furious at President Roosevelt <laughs> because he didn't use bricks. But I'm glad to see you're going to use stone. That's what we need. Thank you. Thank you very much. Would anyone else from the public like to speak about this application? Okay, so I'm in a bit of a quandary. We were prepared to close the public hearing and take action tonight, but we have new information about the drainage that everyone seems concerned with. Um, so what we, would n what we would normally do is continue the public hearing for two weeks. You were prepared to submit everything on Friday, I believe. Um, how do you think, just to jump in, do you think that the drainage or any question on the drainage, is that, is that a planning board issue? I mean, I'm not doing any site work. Well, it's a, if once, it's just, once it's given to us, it's a planning board, it's a site plan issue, so it's a planning board issue. Um, would the board like to condition this on resolution by the town engineer, add a condition to the resolution so that the town engineer could deal with this to his satisfaction rather than coming back before us? Uh, alternatively, I mean, that he would still need to work that out with Pete before he's able to apply or able to obtain a building permit, but he could get the building permit stuff started. Um, alternatively, we could try to find a, a time to do a special meeting next week, if you guys are so inclined. If Michael, could, could, I think a number of up. us are attending the uh, session next Wednesday. Oh, yes, me too. I don't know if we have a quorum. Uh, I might propose that we could close it out next Wednesday. It's one of the town engineer can do it by that time. I have to admit, I don't have my calendar in front of me. I don't know if I have anything later. I, I know I have, the, the training is from one, th just for everyone. One thirty to three thirty. Yeah, we're required to have uh, sexual harassment and safety, workplace safety training. Yeah, violence in the workplace. It's called OSHA. <laughs> well, there's, there's two separate sessions. There's a one thirty to three thirty, then there's a 6.30 to 8.30, I believe. So the room will be occupied that night. Has, is anyone here signed up for the 6.30 to 8.30? I am. You are? 
there's three members that haven't signed up and Sandy asked me to mention it. Well, I, as a, a reminder, this is now a requirement of the state to uh, receive your training. Um, would it be possible for us to, to continue this to, say, 6 p.m. next Wednesday, a week from Wednesday? Or again, the other alternate would be to have uh, a condition added so that the drainage is met sat with to the satisfaction of our town engineer. I'm not sure how to word that exactly, but I think Victoria could. What, oh, do, what does our attorney say? Site. We're talking about just this one area. One area, because I don't, I don't know if Pete's, I don't know if when he goes out. <laughs> because it seems kind of nebulous at this point, we're not sure where the drain is, whose property it's on. I would prefer not to condition approval. Okay. on that just because it's br a broad issue at this point I'd, I'd like a little more confirmation of what exactly you would want Pete to do so we know when it's satisfied then Pete needs to go out and tell us do some investigation first so we understand more the nature of the problem um, could we try for a six o'clock meeting a absolutely week Wednesday? Good, with me. good with me do I have a yeah, quorum I'll be there okay I have a minimum of a qu I have at least a quorum then uh, there being no other further public comment I'm on the eight. Dutchess County Planning Board is meeting next Wednesday too I know I'm on it. I know. I have I'm to be invited. <laughs> oh, oh, that's right. Good. I have a county planning board meeting from 3:30 to. F we 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 are out promptly at five, so I'll be back here by six. Okay. You will believe me. They really are prompt. It's your first time to join. Wait, yeah. But there's a special presentation that day. Well, let's hope. We're, well, I may have to leave early to get back out. So, I'm making a motion to continue the public hearing to Wednesday, October the 8th. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. At 6 p.m. at that specific time. We'll get Pete, uh, I'll get Pete started working with you as soon as possible. Do you, do you have his contact information as well? Well, no, he's the town engineer. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So are you going to want me at that meeting or if we, no? You well, don't have we, to be. We do need the new revised plans. Well, I can, leave, I can leave both of these with you if you want me to. That set and this set? Well. Is that what you want? It, at the minimum, yes. Yeah. One for Pete, one for you guys. Yeah. And one for the, time for the file. We'll need, a, we'll need a third set for the file. Okay. Before we get a third set for the file, we'll need actually a set that has a planning board block signature. Actually, why don't you, if you want to give him a draft resolution, then oh, if yeah. he's going to be printing more plans, he can just make the changes now. Here. Do you have one? Oh. Okay. okay, so not adopted, but these were the things. These were changes to the plans that you were going to have to make. It looks like you've probably addressed some of them already by your sign plan. Um, but this one you're going to have to do. This one you're going to have to do. Uh, this one is going to be revised to say. If necessary, if necessary, we'll be in another room then. Yeah. This one's going to, I'm crossing out part of that last one. So it'll only be revised to say that. So you can make the changes now or you can make them later. I thought it was 6 30. That's what I remember. It was weird. It was in the last hour. When you meet with Pete, he'll go over all those Here, the, have, the conditions too. I have the survey already. Because that there were no changes to this, right? Right. You don't need that again. No. Thank you, Mr. Leitz. We'll see. Well, we, you don't have to be here in a week, but um, if you have a pen, Mr. Sotero's number is four five four three four one one. Wait, three four four one. I'm sorry. Mm hmm Pete Sotero, S E T A R O. I've already alerted him to it, but if you want to give him a call in the morning, because the sooner this can be addressed, the better. Okie doke. Thank you. The next item on the agenda is a new public hearing for MOLTS, lot line revision. Making a motion to open the public hearing. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Do I come on up, Mr. and Mrs. Molt? Actually, if you want to come up here, these are the sets of plans that you didn't have. Did you ever receive them? So when we were seeing the new boundary line and the 50-foot setback, what we weren't seeing, because I failed to look how tiny that was written, 
this was the limit of disturbance. So <coughs> the limits of disturbance from the 1992 site plan show you already have in many areas bigger than a 50 foot setback for the new property line. So all we will need to do is have a line like this just adjusted where it's not quite 50 feet to be shown. That's it. That was as complicated as it was and I apologize that we had to negotiate so much back and forth to discover it. But again, because you didn't see these and I have this map without, without the line, that's what I thought. And I didn't realize that this was actually where the limits were in the first place. So you pretty much, y it's over here, it's, you may need to dot that out just a little bit because for the most part, this will be the same thing as this. Does that make any sense to you? In other words, we don't have to do you'll, you'll need to have your uh, surveyor remove this before I can sign it and he'll just need to relocate a portion of this. He'll, he can show it running contiguously and just here. And we, don't, we won't need a bunch of sets of plans and he, only need to, he will only need to change wherever the 50 foot setback is shown. So he needs to change all three, all three sheets to remove this. Well, it was requested. Right, but it needs to show. It's still. It's not requested. It's required. It still needs to show a 50 foot setback. It just needs to show where it might deviate right in through here, if that makes any sense. It's a simple data layer for him. I assure you, he can remove this. If you heard the data layers earlier, being when they're doing an AutoCAD, they turn off a layer and this just goes poof and disappears, and then he has to redraw a line just to plot it out 50 feet from the green just so we know that in through here there's a 50 foot buffer maintained everywhere. I might add, in through here, it's gotta be shown, but you don't even store anything there because, <laughs> so you can't. And I don't, there's nothing there. So that's just, that's made a condition uh, of the approval. So again, I apologize. I wish that we had seen, been able to parley over this in person earlier when we all had the same sets of maps because Mm -hmm. You were looking at one set and I was looking at the other. That's why we kept going, no, no, no. So anyway, that's the simple part of this. Um, I think I've explained to everybody what happened uh, was that the 50, foot, the 50 foot buffer was shown in the wrong parcel. As it turns out, the proposed boundary line was in most cases, except for one small area, well over 50 feet from your actual site plan approval. So the, the buffer that, you're, that we require is for the most part, except for one little section, already there with your new property line. So um, let me get any comments from the consultants, Ms. Polidoro? No. Uh, Mr. Cigna? No, just that I'm glad it's turned out the way it is because I know how hard they've worked to, to try to make it consistent with uh, the, the town's zoning. I also want to emphasize real quickly how pleasant it was to work with you when I kept saying, no, you can't, you've got to change it. <laughs> no, no, you were really, you never lost your temper. You were really nice throughout the whole thing and that's not always the case, believe me. Um, Mr. Murphy? I'm too I'm glad that it's over and it shouldn't be this hard. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Groninger? <laughs> well, we, we've been through this sort of thing before and I'm sure we'll have it again. But at any rate, I'm happy for you. Ms. Dexter? Well, great. Excellent resolution. Mr. Mercigliano? Yep. No comment. Okay, <laughs> would any member of the public like to comment about this application? Nope. May I get a motion to close the public hearing? So moved. Second. Who has this file? I do. Ah. <laughs> Townified Park Planning Board resolution granting subdivision approval, MOLT subdivision, October 1st, 2014, resolution number 14-16A. Whereas, 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 now therefore be it resolved that the planning board hereby approves the subdivision plat entitled Topographic Map Lot Line Adjustment for Charles and Patricia MOLT, dated April 1st, 2014, last revised May 27th, 2014, prepared by Spencer S. Hall, land surveyor, and authorizes the chair to sign the subdivision plat after compliance with the following conditions. One, payment of all fees in escrow. Two, revision of the plat to show the 50-foot buffer on the east side of the new property line for the salvage yard and eliminate the proposed 50-foot buffer on the western side of the new property line. Three, Department of Health permission to file. Do I have a second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries unanimously. Thank you and thanks for your patience and forbearance and if you have any other problems, you know how to reach me. Thanks.
the next item on the agenda uh, is a sign application for TEG Federal, oh, I'm sorry, is a site plan amendment for TEG Federal Credit Union. Uh, we received a word back from Dutchess County Planning today that it was a matter of local concern. They did have a suggestion that we ask the applicant to, oh, are you here to represent the applicant? Aha, uh -huh. <laughs> I thought I saw some stonework over there. Please come on up. <laughs> and if you would, state your name for the record. EEG Federal Credit Union. In essence, you're just taking some uh, blank walls and adding cultured stone that looks like ledge rock. Yeah. <laughs> and, and basically, it's if you go in past the branch, there's some white clad board that's the majority of the siding on the bank. And we're going to do a lath and stone application, which is, which is what we proposed. We put in the original package. Um, <clears throat> not the physical sample, but the sheet, mm -hmm, paper mm -hmm. sheet for Which the manufacturer. Which we saw. And uh, we're also asked, we were asked by Ms. Moss to do a bench at the front, and we submitted uh, those. The tear sheet and the location, correct? Um, what I was going to tell everyone is Ms. Moss doesn't, we can only waive, we were here tonight to consider setting a, a public hearing. But Ms. Moss and I are in a conversation today, don't believe that many members of the public will come out because this looks pretty non-controversial. We don't really have a lot of people coming out, usually for facade upgrades. We are not allowed ourselves to have a public hearing for a site plan amendment unless Ms. Moss makes a recommendation. She did issue a recommendation uh, for that today. It's still up to the board whether we want to uh, consider waiving the public hearing, but if so, we have a resolution prepared. It's a pretty simple change. Uh, the only comment we had from DC Planning and I want everyone to consider it, was that there is one wall of existing stone. It's not ledge rock like that. It's uh, glaciated rock, meaning it's like more like river rock, so it's got rounder edges. And Ms. Lavoinway of DC Planning just wanted us to consider whether we, we should require the applicant to face, reface that wall with this stone so that it looks consistent. Um, I myself think it's okay to have what I'll call an accent wall that's different. I'll also would like to point out that taking off that, it's one thing to add the stone onto an existing wall. It's not that difficult. It's much more difficult to tear off stone that's mortared already on a wall. Um, but we added a condition to the resolution in case a majority of the board wants to see all the walls be uniform with this. We added it as a condition. We can also delete it before it's uh, read into the record. So comments? I think we ought to make it a suggestion rather than a uh, requirement. Uh, Did you catch that? Yeah. Um, we suggest that you. <laughs> yeah, well, it's just a suggestion. I don't think it ought to be part of the resolution. Uh, our feeling, maybe you could explain our feeling about that. Could it's you that speak exactly closer to the microphone? <laughs> we were exactly thinking that it was an accent wall. And we purposely picked out the stone because it's very complementary. And your the, colors and match the colors. The colors are very, very complementary. So. It, it was not without a lot of consideration about not doing that. There was some discussion back and forth. And it, as, as you said, it, the, in terms of the credit union, it's a, it's a dollar issue. That's what I assumed. And I'll be honest with you, I don't see anything wrong with it being kind of an accent wall. That's just me personally. Um, anyone else want to weigh in there? I think I'm going to weigh in, as my colleague to my left did, and let's allow the client the flexibility to do that. Either way, whatever you deem on that, they're both very nice looking. If you want to have it as two different kinds, I don't see a problem with that. That's my opinion. Ed, any comments? I have no comments, no. Anne or Frank? They've already uh, thought about the, uh, this question and have resolved it apparently to their own satisfaction, so seems fine to me. Good. Um, then are we all agree that we can waive the public hearing as yes. well? It's in the resolution? Yes. Do we have to make a motion to waive? No, it's, in the res it's written in the resolution. Oh. Um, who has this file? I have this file. Can you delete the condition that? I can delete anything you want. <laughs> <laughs> I condition two. I believe it's condition two. Done. And uh, the second part of the last one issue says revision of the site plan to provide for the new stone veneer on the entire building. No, take that out. 
that's that's what would be deleted because right, right now it's okay. on three out of four. Well, we're more. deleting two things: the public hearing and that. Yes. Well, right. no, you don't need to delete the public hearing because. I'm sorry. It's it's written in a whereas. Okay, I'm sorry. It yes. says, uh, be it further Waves. resolved, the board hereby waives the requirement okay. for a public hearing. Okay. So that can stay in. Mr. Crosley, you're very lucky. Thank you. Resolution granting site plan amendment approval TEG Federal Credit Union October 1st, 2014, Resolution 14-10, whereas, 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 now, therefore, be it resolved that the planning board hereby classifies the project as a type 2 secret action, be it further resolved that the planning board hereby waives the requirement for a public hearing, be it further resolved that the planning board hereby approves the site plan and authorizes the chair to sign the site plan after satisfaction of the following conditions, payment of all fees and escrow. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Since our first time to work together, I expect you to go back across the river and proclaim how wonderful it is to work with the Town of Hyde Park Planning Board, okay? <laughs> yeah, I'll do that in a way out of town. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thanks very much. Thank you. And uh, this is going to be a beautiful addition and a nice change. We're very fortunate in our community right now that we're seeing a variety of these facade upgrades. Yes. Um, it may be a response to the slow economy, trying to get better tenants, but in your case, it's just a way to make everything look better and fit in better into the town. So thank you. Thank your client again from us. Great. The next item on the agenda is a signed permit recommendation for Chestnut Petroleum. Uh, this is the mobile station located at uh, 110 Violet yeah. Avenue and 9G. And there shouldn't be much discussion because it was code compliant. <laughs> it's a nice looking sign. How'd that happen? Congratulations. <laughs> I believe Miss Moss in her letter, our email actually said it was a pleasure to find something that was code compliant. Yeah. Well, uh, you, I know that uh, you had two different ones here from Chestnut, and after the last time when Scott just kind of threw up his hands, <laughs> I talked to him afterwards because I've done work for them before, and I just said, you know, let me take a shot at getting you what you need. It's a nice-looking sign with yeah. the, the monopole over to the right, the little arch on top. It's very attractive, I'm telling you. Yeah. Well, the, the only difference when you work with these, there's something very wrong with gas station signs because there's the whole like shell or whatever is isn't or mobile whatever it is is tied in with one company to do the manufacturing extremely expensive oh and they only prepare certain sizes and because they are so costly they try to do whatever they can to get that size whether it be height square footage gotcha. and whatever because that's a standard so when they go into something that's not standard it's um very very costly but Fortunately, I've been able to work this out that we can actually make it for them. So, excellent. Kept Any questions from the board for Ms. Forrest no. about the sign? Who has this file? Yeah, I do. Uh, resolution recommending issuance of a sign permit pursuant to Town Code Section 108-24.2.C, October 1st, 2014. Resolution number 14-38. Whereas, 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 whereas. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Planning Board recommends issuance of a sign permit by the Zoning Administration Administrator for the freestanding sign, including four fuel pricing panels, as proposed. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. You know, it took me a long time on these resolutions. It seems sad to hear all those whereas is read so fast. I had to labor <laughs> over them. But it's good that we got it going. Yeah, so Frank's a train whereas. <laughs> <laughs> do, you need me sooner. <laughs> do you need a copy of the resolution by any, for any uh, reason? Usually send me yep, one they will. Done, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Next item on the agenda is a signed permit for Darby O'Gills. Who has this file? I oh, have this file. He has a trifecta. By the way, okay. I'm going to give one more, uh, another compliment to a really great uh, number of signs. You achieved design unity over all of them because of the similar background. The locations look nice. They were code compliant. You did a great job. Thanks. <laughs> and just for the edification of the board, anybody who's listening or watching, uh, there have been some facade improvements at this site um, that were not reviewed by the planning board. I want to make certain that everyone's aware that this was not an oversight, that this is actually allowed. Um, because they're replacing brick with stone veneer, it did not require a building permit. It's only when a building permit is required that site plan is automatically uh, issued or required also because you can't get it if it's required. And Mr. I talked to Mr. Westermeyer and because it was a load-bearing front wall and went to a load-bearing front wall, 
it was uh, completely allowed. So that's why they didn't have to come in. Um, and could you please carry a suggestion to Mr. Van Valkenburg, or I can too? The only thing that we would have had him do in addition, because he's already got a striped sidewalk or crosswalk yeah. in the front, it's something we, we think it would make it look better. And before you put up the two side wall signs, mm -hmm. we would recommend a skim coat of stucco and repainting. It'll lose that cinder block look and make it look far more polished since he has the front. It's something that the board normally asks for. It's not that expensive considering what he's done to skim cut it. Was, it's just a little bit of stucco and then painting over it because it, it will lose that cinder block effect. So it's up to him because there's yeah, no site plan. I'll speak to him tomorrow morning. But I can guarantee it will make both those sides look better. It'll finish off that building because it's looking really, really, really nice right now. Yeah. I think. But I think we all do. So uh, any questions from Mr. Hersling Herslinger from the board? No, at the nice signs? job. No. And he's going to be here for the next three. So who has? He's got the trifecta. Actually, let's, let's just go ahead and <laughs> instead of say, doing yeah. each one, there'll be one for Park Beverage. Um, for the wall signs, and then also one for Park Beverage for the new directory sign. Do you have all three of these? I have all three. I, I got the uh, trifecta here. Okay, before we start, the resolution for Darby O'Gills has two minor changes to it. Wait, what? That does that include, uh, I submitted one after, one for each side and the front sign. The resolution is for two wall signs, one on the south side and one in the front, a, 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 a wall sign on the front okay. for Park Beverage. The W.O. Gills only includes the one side on the side because they already have a sign up front. Right. And then the third resolution will deal with the directory Mon sign. Monument sign. Yes, your monument sign, directory okay. sign. So I made sure that they have both wall signs covered. Okay. And for W.O. Gills, did I make, oh yes. Okay, there are two minor corrections. The actual name on it is Darby O'Gills Wall Signs. And the first, whereas also we had to make a minor correction to put the correct name in there, Darby O'Gills. So there are two amendments to this. I don't know if we have to, I think we have, I'll read it and then just say as amended. I think that will cover us. Okay, resolution recommending issuance of a sign permit pursuant to town code sections 108-24-.2A and 108-24.2C sub 2. October 1st, 2014, Darby O'Gill's wall signs, resolution 14-40, whereas, 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 now therefore be it resolved that the planning board recommends issuance of a sign permit by the zoning administrator for the wall signs for Darby O'Gills as proposed, noting that it has design unity illustrated by a uniform background color consistent with adjacent store signage. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. First one down. Okay. All right, moving along. Park Beverages, this is also a wall sign. Darby O'Gills was on the north face. This is on the south face. Resolution recommending issuance of a sign permit pursuant to town code sections 108-24.2.A and 108-24.2C sub 2. Park Beverage Wall Signs, October 1st, 2014. Resolution 14-41A. Whereas, 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 now therefore be it resolved that the planning board recommends issuance of a sign permits by the zoning administrator for the wall signs for park beverage as proposed, noting that it has design unity illustrated by a uniform background color consistent with adjacent stores signage. Second. Do I have a second? Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Number two down. Two down. And need that part two. I am on a roll. I'm going to do three as quick as we can. <laughs> Resolution recommending issuance of a sign permit pursuant to town code. Uh, we're not going to, we're going to do a skip on that one. We know what it is. Park beverage freestanding directory sign. October 1st, 2014, resolutions 14 41. Whereas, 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 whereas. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the planning board recommends issuance of a sign permit by the zoning administrator for the freestanding directory sign, including four tenant panels as proposed. Noting that it has design unity as illustrated by uniform background, color consistent with adjacent storage signage. Second. And I, thank you. On favor. Aye. 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 Motion carries unanimously. Congratulations. What a nice thing it's going to be to see driving into I that know. part of town. Great. They're going to do a soffit in the front, mm -hmm. right? 
right across the whole front of it. Right, that's how, that's one of the things we were urging uh, Mr. Leese, who is here for Haviland Plaza, yeah. to consider was to do some, like a, a, a fascia board so that it right. could go, because our code is it can't be attached to the roof. Right. So his other option was instead of adding anything along the front was to also just propose uh, wall signs, which is what he did. But that's part of the approval. Right. Okay, great. I thank you. Thank you. And it again, it's just a suggestion about the skim coating, but I'll, I'll speak to them tomorrow. your lovely signs will look a lot nicer with that as a background, <laughs> I promise. They'll be showcased. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Take it easy, Jeff. The second to last item on the agenda is Shelley's signs for Shelley's Deli. That's the last item on my agenda. Well, I'm going to oh. ask for a quick motion to release escrow. Do we not put that on the agenda? We haven't heard from Pete. Oh, that's right. So we have to postpone that. Okay. Then the last item on the agenda is a sign permit recommendation for Shelley's Deli. Anybody have this file? Oh, be me. You're Shelley's Deli people. Oh, nice oh. Come on up. Oh. Nice to meet you. Since we're televised, oh. mm -hmm. tell us your name, speak into the microphone, tell us your names, and tell us a little bit about what your store is going to have. Uh, I'm Ricky Erickson, and this is my fiance, Michelle Cerrone. Um, we're going to have really great sandwiches. Closer in? We're going to have really great sandwiches and hot food and everything good you can customer think of. Service. <laughs> Are you Shelly? <laughs> Will there be, this is going to be, so you'll have indoor dining, you can actually order uh, and yeah, sit down? Yeah, dining area, but mostly uh, takeout and delivery. Oh, delivery? Yep. Yeah. Oh. That's a rarity in our town. Yes. yes. Nice. That's exactly why we did it. <laughs> well, it. let me, on behalf of all six, all seven of us up here, welcome to Hyde Park. We're delighted you're investing and bringing business into our community. Thank you. Thank you. you have some, uh, I'll just hazard it and say great landlords that are willing to help fix Absolutely. these things up yeah. um, as you go and I wish you great success when you have your opening your store opening um, I we usually try to attend these things if you join the, if, you, if you feel like joining the chamber they have a big ribbon cutting as well and it's usually advertised great. in papers we always try to attend that says so the to our elected officials so um, we'll be wishing you well in other words um, any questions from the board about from the Okay. Welcome. Who has this file? Uh, welcome. That would be me. Resolution granting request for dimensional increase for proposed wall signage and recommending issuance of a sign permit resolution number 14 12. No, yeah, is that 42? 42, sorry. <laughs> whereas, 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 whereas. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the board makes the following findings with respect to the requested bonus to permit a maximum letter height of 12 inches as cited be below for the proposed Shelley's Deli wall sign. One, additional size of letters inappropriate given the sign's distance from the road. Two, the increase in size is appropriate due to the size of the building upon which the wall sign is being placed. Be it further resolved that the planning board recommends issuance of a sign permit by the zoning administrator for the wall sign as proposed, noting that both have a design unity consistent with the adjacent store signage. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries unanimously. Again, welcome to Hyde Park. We can't, when do you think you might be open? Uh, they said hopefully Halloween. Oh, oh wow. Nice. You guys are moving along pretty quickly. Yeah. That's fantastic. Yep. Do you live in Hyde Park? Uh, no, hopefully soon. Right. Oh, well. Oh, we definitely want to welcome you to our community then. Thank you. Particularly if you feel like having children. Give them a paper too. We do. Ultimately, we have to get married. We have some schools to fill up right now. So um, thank you then, and uh, you're ready to go All from right. us. Thank you, everybody. Mm -hmm. thank Take you. care. You're welcome. Motion to adjourn. So moved. All in favor? Second. Aye. Aye. Oh, just a comment on the next agenda meeting has got to be on oh, yes. Friday. You guys did this so fast. So. Uh, all right. We've been having discussion about our agenda meetings and the fact that when we do them on Monday, you get a lot of information thrown at the board gets a lot of inf mm -hmm. information thrown at you on Wednesday, the day of when it's sort of impossible to digest. So Ed proposed that we move it to the week before like we used to on Fridays, but instead of Fridays to give both Victoria and Tad and me an extra day to do it on Thursdays instead. So from now on, we'll be meeting Thursdays at 930. That's what we agreed to. Victoria couldn't do a Wednesday. If it's okay with everybody. Yeah. Um, mm. So we'll try. We'll, we're going to try that for a while. That way, 
I could have started on these resolutions earlier. And, done them. and I apologize because Tad normally does these, as you know, but she's uh, got a court date tomorrow, so she's been busy preparing for court, so I volunteered. And because I stayed in New York City an extra day, I just didn't, I didn't take my paperwork with me. It was so, fine. Um, so we'll be changing that, and the next schedule, and that means will be next Thursday. So we'll schedule the agenda meeting for next Thursday. We couldn't have met on Monday anyway because it's a public holiday. It's Columbus Day. Oh, Ed, yeah, Ed, right. Ed cleverly pointed that out because he knows those holidays. So <laughs> otherwise, we're adjourned. Thank you again. Thank you, Media Committee, for televising us as always. Thank you, Herb and Barbara. Thank you all.